CSET membership is made up of students from many different engineering faculties. We also draw students from outside of engineering, from programs such as life science, biology, and commerce. This year on QSET, we restructured the team so the command structure was much more horizontal to enable better communication between the subteams. The two administrative roles on the team are the captain and the VP of operations. Uh, the captain oversees all the financial and logistical uh, responsibilities for the team, and I oversee all the technical aspects of the team. <coughs> the logistical teams include sponsorship, PR, and outreach. These teams are responsible for financial tracking, sponsorship coordination, and managing the team's social media accounts. This year, we've implemented much more rigorous financial tracking for the team's expenditures. The technical subteams consist of the mechanical, electrical, and science teams. The technical subteam heads work closely together to coordinate design decisions. In my role as VP of Operations, I ensure compatibility between the various subsystems. The focus of the mechanical team this year was to make the mechanical and structural components of the rover much more durable. At last year's competition, the rover suffered several critical breakdowns in the field. Following, an FMEA was conducted in order to help the redesign for this year. The mechanical team works very closely with the electrical team in order to ensure all subsystems work throughout the design and build process. Our designs begin as hand drawings, which are then further developed using 3D modeling software. This year, we had access to CNC milling, which was used to manufacture the suspension and arm mount. Modular material was used in order to allow flexibility when attaching hardware and components to the chassis and arm. We were able to quickly realign components without having to drill or cut new holes. From our experiences this year, next year we hope to fully machine the chassis and arm. The electrical team is responsible for power, control, and communication. We split up into small groups to work on individual components. To keep track of progress, we use Trello, an online project management and to-do list application. Our philosophy is incremental improvement. We keep the design based on the best parts of last year's and improve the components where we can. By having a working basis for our design, we always know we'll have something that works and we have something to fall back on. Also, many of the members are new every year, so they can learn something from the working design before adding their own improvements. For the new members, we also had several tutorials taught by returning members about topics such as Arduino, electrical safety, and motors. For code, we use Git, a version control system that's standard in the software industry. This lets us track, collaborate, and review code. Again, the idea is incremental improvement. In software, this is called refactoring. Doing a complete rewrite is risky, so we keep the code base functioning as a whole, but rewrite individual components. One change we made this year is to replace the onboard computer with BeagleBones, which really simplified the flow of information in our system. We'd like to work towards having all software done in ROS, but this year we can only do that for the communication protocol. So incremental improvement lets the team achieve more over the years than what an individual member can do in any given year. This really sets us up for success in the future. We started a science team this year for the competition. Last year, the science aspect of the competition was left up to the engineers in addition to their other tasks, which was insufficient and challenging for the team. At the beginning of the year, we started doing research into the geology, precursors of life, and their respective experiments. Finding water is crucial for astronaut consumption, agricultural use, mining, and to produce fuel. We worked out what tests we wanted the rover to perform and collaborated with the mechanical and electrical teams to determine the best way to build the physical experiments. The tests we are conducting focus on assisting astronauts on Mars by using the rover as a scouting tool to find suitable locations. The pH of the soil is a good indicator of the balance of available nutrients in the soil and which crops will grow. pH will be measured on board and retested during the bench testing to confirm the results using a probe and test strips. We will be determining soil humidity by using a one or resistivity array since there is a correlation between resistivity of a soil and its moisture content. Nitrates and nitrites in soil are important for agriculture. Soil nitrate is a form of inorganic nitrogen that is an essential nutrient for plants. For this year, we decided to utilize a backhoe design for our arm. Uh, it allows us to maximize the subsurface depth we can reach. We can reach a maximum of about 12 centimeters below the surface. Uh, as seen here, you, we have a backhoe-like scoop. It allows linear motion using an actuator in order to get a full 180 degree, actually a bit more than 180 degree rotation. But we also have two other end effectors. One for the equipment servicing task that can turn valves and flick switches. And another one 
that can pick up tools and other equipment for the astronaut assistance task. As in previous years, we're using aluminum extrusion for the chassis. It allows for easy manufacturing and modification, and it also allows for hardware components such as a suspension, arm base, and enclosure to be mounted anywhere along the chassis. On last year's rover, we mounted our motors vertically into a 90 degree gearbox. This was in an effort to protect the motors from damage due to rocks or other obstacles in the field. The gearbox proved to be a point of weakness on the rover and failed during the competition. This year, we've opted to mount our motors directly uh, into the wheels horizontally. To protect the motors, we've built these enclosures out of thin sheet metal. The rover's suspension is based on a double A-arm design, which is used in a lot of off-road vehicles. The rover uses pneumatic shocks, which can be centrally charged. This allows us to charge the front shocks and back shocks independent of each other. This year, we've opted to use low-pressure balloon tires on our rover. Last year, we used our own 3D printed wheels. This keeps vibrations caused by small rocks from propagating up into the chassis of the rover. Inside the electrical box, the various components run on six different voltage levels. So regulators are needed to convert the 24 volts from the lithium polymer batteries down to a level that each subsystem can use. Each subsystem is fused to protect the robot and to protect bystanders, an e-stop button is included. A new addition this year is current sensors for every servo in the arm and wrist. Eventually, this could be used for force control of the end effector, but right now, it is useful to tell if one of the joints is struggling. In our communication setup, the operator uses a joystick with a graphical interface program on their laptop. Commands and telemetry are sent over a Wi-Fi antenna to the BeagleBone Black computers on the rover. Each of these interfaces with a subset of the actuators, sensors, and cameras. Communication is distributed with no strict hierarchy. For example, each BeagleBone can only handle a few motor encoders. To accommodate this, we decided to change our communication protocol to the ROS publisher and subscriber system. The upside of the system is the fewer layers make it easier to code and maintain.